Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 8. Thoughts? This episode is called Part 8, The Jedi, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. Almost said Wardrobe, Warlord. I mean, that's gotta be... I want to say the book is Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe. Anyway, another episode I love. Fantastic season. The... Uh, let's see. Yeah, spoilers for everything, Star Wars. So... The top link and description box will enable you to donate to the Skyafter Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, without further ado, let's dive in. So, yeah, at the start, you know, Thrawn is talking about, you know, not underestimating the, the Jedi, you know, noting... Even I fell victim to a single Jedi. I dread to think what would have happened if he were married as well. I don't think I ended up writing it down, so I'll say it here so I don't forget. At the end of the episode, Thrawn just disappears, you know, and yeah, the heroes don't know without, with absolute certainty where to, and there's this idea of, you know, he might be a threat in the future despite best efforts that is kind of his go-to move in in Star Wars shows by now and yeah very cool when the great mothers give Morgan the the gift of shadows and the blade and I appreciate the weight that it's given in a very action-heavy episode they let this sit and really love I love how cinematic the show is love the shot of Thrawn and the two ties readying and flying out over his shoulders just fantastic you know underlining they are they serve his will and yeah Ezra still does not like taking advice from others. As Hu Yang points out, I've been building lightsabers longer than you've been alive. And, you know, yeah, Hu Yang notes, looks like you were a good student and leans to see... Ah, Sabine already left. I wanted to say, you know, you, you could learn a lot from him, Sabine. Ah, I gotta... Make sure she's present when I deliver these harsh burns. And yeah, you know, the the Hu Yang tells Ezra, you know, Ahsoka was worried that Sabine would become dangerous if she reached her full potential. And yeah, you know, um Ahsoka is sitting atop the the ship when Sabine, uh, you know, exits, and uh, you know, asks, you know, notes, you must be pleased. <laughs> they were just building a lightsaber in there, which does sound like a euphemism. Look, Sabine did not do anything untoward. Her hands were above the equator the entire time. She merely looked on as Ezra handled his shaft. Oh, wow. Now I... Yeah, that didn't sound any better, did it? Which still wouldn't leave her pleased. But yeah, the... Yeah, and they do the, you know... I try. I mean, I do. I do still appreciate the, you know, rebels addressing, you know, what does do or do not, there is no try even mean. We've lost stabilizers. We are as unstable as Babyface when he hears pronouns. And I love the ship torpedoing the, the ties. And yeah, so they head for the front door. And the turbo, turbo lasers are, of course, no match for plot armor. I wouldn't have minded if there was some, like, I don't know, just like maybe they, they use telekinesis to pick up sheet metal and that you know blocks the blasts or something even for for like star wars bad guys missing good guys this felt very 
yeah. I don't have very many problems with this episode, but that was one. Is it time? Really love the action when the trio fights the troopers. Not entirely sure why they move so slow other than that the episode needs it because the zombification process takes like a minute before all the troopers are back on their shambling feet. But yeah, zombies, love to see it. Always, uh, you know, when, whenever you can make it work. You know, even if it's a property that doesn't usually do zombies. Loved it when Marvel did it. Ah, is this, I guess that's a spoiler to say. I'll just say there was an ABC show that I love that also did it. Yeah, uh, they managed to fit in all the, the zombie stuff. They're, you know, I already mentioned they're jam shambling. The, the kind of, you know, they are able to go on fighting even after, like, they've been, you know, cut and stabbed and, and shot and such. And I think that might be about what I had to say about the zombies. Um, one thing that they do, of course, not have with, with the zombies is, like, actual graphic gore. And, you know, we're not expecting that from something like this. So I was not, yeah. I can I can live with with that being yeah and yeah you know great to see more dark magic by the night sisters and yeah you know when Thrawn simply says I require more time you know Morgan knows exactly what that means and she doesn't, like, try to talk him out of it or anything. He says, for the Empire, she says, for Dathomir. And Ahsoka, is, you know, is like, I'll handle this. Handle this? You, you know, your predecessors show much more respect. And, yeah, Morgan and Ahsoka have a rematch, and it is epic. I loved it. Been waiting the entire season for this. Love to see it. Just, yeah. And, yeah, um, one of the troopers throws Ezra instead of, like, doing something that would actually kill him. Really not a fan of when that happens in fiction, but it didn't take me out of it. And Sabine finally does manage to use telekinesis to <clears throat> and she you know it was 100% necessary here you know she gets the lightsaber and she gets it like right next to his head turns it on so it just goes through the head and you know which yeah the very last jedi throne room fight love to see it and you know Ezra notes you know I can't, even I can't make this jump. Not that I'm, not now that I'm no longer animated. And really props to Diana Lee in Inosanto playing Morgan when she says, kill her, like that, you know, love this big villain performance, you know. And... Yeah, um, Ezra got away before the bombardment, and Hu Yang to the rescue. And over the communication thing, Thrawn notes, you know, how like Anakin is Ahsoka. And they do manage to fly off without... And, yeah, the episode shows us where the various characters are. You know, Shin joins the the raiders. And Balin goes to this big, like, statue, car, you know, mountain carve thing. 
and Ezra poses as a trooper one more time. Love the reference, don't love the lack of logic, although I suppose Ezra does sometimes do really reckless things, but just like at least take the helmet off before you step down the, you know. But I do know, I, I like that, you know, Chopper recognized him. And, yeah, and actually, like, for a lot of Rebels, Chopper was very hostile towards Ezra and every other living thing and robot. But here, you know, he's like, no, this is, yeah, this is my friend. And, yeah, you know, the Force Ghost of Anakin is watching over the... The yeah, Ahsoka and Sabine still on the the planet. So yeah, this very much sets up the the movie that is to come. And yeah, um, so yeah, this was a very action heavy finale. I th I feel like they did address. You know, there weren't that many like philosophical issues left they had resolved most of those before this episode and you know Ahsoka does tell Sabine you know if you hadn't made this decision we wouldn't have been able to save Ezra and I think yeah, I suppose just briefly, you know, ultimately, not a lot of point to Jason Sandula appearing on this show, other than basically, you know, hinting at some point in the future he might become a Jedi. I didn't think Hera got enough to do. I wasn't 100% sold on Shinhati at first. You know, Balin, you know, Played amazingly by Ray Stevenson, R.I.B. You know, he he was great from moment one. Shinhati, you know, it, it took a little while before I was 100% sold on her. But, yeah, by the end of this season, I was definitely, like, you know, I'm glad she's still around. I, I hope we get to see... I mean, considering that she and Balin are on the same... Well, like, yeah, I guess... Balin, uh, Disney, please do not bring Balin back using the the dark sorcery of your de-aging and, well, not de-aging, but the, the CG, you know, please, please don't do that. Don't disrespect Ray Stevenson like that. But yeah, I'm, you know, Shinhati is on the same planet as Sabine and Ahsoka, so there is some chance we'll, we'll get more of her. Um, yeah, this very much delivered on Morgan. Um, you know, she was interesting already on Mandalorian. And, you know, there was very much, like, promise of more to come. Um, yeah, I felt like they made good use of Hu Yang. It didn't feel like just fan service to bring him back. And Ezra also, you know, they had some really meaningful moments with him, and it was, yeah, you know, I doubt I will ever be truly unhappy about seeing him interact with Sabine. Like, you'd have to do a really bad job with writing and performances, and that absolutely was not the case here. Mon Mothma, I don't know that I, you know... She wasn't strictly necessary, but I'm never unhappy to see her, especially when played by Jinry O'Reilly. And, yeah, Hayden Christensen, 100%, you know, I knew he had it in him. He redeemed his performance in the prequels. I've long said that was not on him. That was on George Lucas's weakness when it comes to directing actors. 
I was very happy with, uh, but, but yeah, uh, you know, they had some really great moments with him. He did amazing acting, and they just, they wrote some really good stuff. You know, just the entire episode where he was, you know, guiding Ahsoka, and they had this, you know, this thing of, if all you've known since you were young is war, can you, you know, change from that? Can you become something more? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Thrawn, you know, Lars Mikkelsen really hit it out the part. We knew he had the voice, 100%. And I've seen him in, in you know, other live-action stuff. I knew he could do strong live-action acting also. But yeah, really... It it felt like he stepped right out of the show and into this. It doesn't. It didn't feel like, you know. I mean, Thrawn. Let, let's see. Rebels ended in like 2018, so it's been five years. He didn't miss a step. Felt like he stepped right out of the finale of Rebels right onto this show. And I think that might be about. But but yeah, you know, um, Mon Mothma. And, yeah, Carson Teva, Ryder Asadi, you know, kind of felt like they were here because they were popular with fans more than them having that much to do. Did love, you know, Tim R. Morrison voicing Captain Rex. And, let's see. Was there any other? You know, good to see some of Hamato Ziono. You know, we didn't get that much of a sense of his character in Resistance, and and certainly we haven't seen him from before the the sequel era. I understand that some people were very frustrated by the inefficiency and incompetence of some of the the uh, let's see this is not the resistance yet those are formed later this is the new republic you know and I think what they're doing is setting up you know they they are incapable of stopping the rise of the first order which is, of course, you know, you got to do, there's a lot of legwork to do there to, to make it that credible. Um, I don't know that I felt like they pushed it too far. And, uh, you know, I can't help but wonder if maybe there's also some, like, corruption going on. Uh, you know, that is the case with several real-life rises of fascism. In in addition to you know incompetence by the the sitting government, I I think that might be about what I have to say. Um, yeah. Um, one thing I. The movie itself, I mean, I'm guessing is going to be theatrical because they are not making the money they were hoping for with streaming, you know, basically the, the whole streaming model. They hope to draw in, in, Disney hoped to draw in enough people that it would eventually pay off. And as far as I understand it, they, it hasn't really, they, they are not happy with the numbers. So the movie will be theatrical, and we're also getting more, you know, other Star Wars movies. I don't know how they're going to... I mean, I know people who watched this show who didn't watch the animated stuff. You know, I, I don't know how you're going to bring everybody up to speed. You know, I, I suppose it's possible they're going to try to do, like, how... Avengers uh, Age of Ultron, you know, if you watch that entire movie, by the end of it, you have a sense of who everyone in it is. Some of them, the their most defining moments come fairly late in the film, but 
you know, I feel like I think it might be a mistake if they try to go more the route of Captain America Civil War, which is very much a movie. You know, I, I saw a YouTube review back when it came out by someone who hadn't been keeping up with Marvel, and he was like, who are any of these people? What is going on? I don't understand. You know, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, maybe they can have, like, exposition dumps or, like, flashbacks or something to help explain, I, I think they might need to, there are a lot of people who have, who love Star Wars, but who are not watching anything other than the movies. But yeah, um, I do think they did some good build up to war and, and like world building to, to establish how we get from the, the end of the original trilogy to the start of the sequel trilogy. And uh, I think that might be about what yeah, the yeah, I already mentioned the the show very cinematic throughout. The action was really strong throughout. and I really appreciated the, you know, it's not quite and or but it they, they did do a really great examination of fascism and yeah you know the the let's see episode three was not like my favorite but other than that and I do love all eight episodes overall so so yeah um I don't know if I loved that, like, by the end of this episode, we do actually not have, like, full resolution. Like, I I get it. They're building to a movie. They, they want to leave. And, and this does feel like, you know, this is, like, somewhat like the ending of one of the, the middle movies of all three trilogies, you know, the bad guys still out there, you know, this was a serious blow dealt to the good guys, so the, yeah, um, I suppose in the, if we're, well, for the prequel trilogy, it's maybe more the, the third part than the middle part, but yeah, you know, well, no, actually, yeah, it works for both of those movies, but yeah, the, the, you know, when this when this show started, Thrawn was off in the in this place that we didn't really know. And over the course of it, you know, the, the good guys got to to where he was and tried to stop him from returning, but he does manage to evade them and return. And that's it, you know, the considering that it's eight episodes, I don't know that, I don't think this show would have been worse off if it had been like six episodes, you know, considering that ultimately, like, if we're talking, you know, in the, in the galactic war sense, not that much was accomplished here. There was some great character stuff, some really great examination of fascism, but yeah. Um, I think that is everything. So I will be recording my review of the entire season, which, you know, as far as we know, is the only season there will be. And, you know, if there, if there are more seasons later, I'll do more uh, spoiler-free reviews. But, yeah. Until then... Telekinesis working in the last moment to you all.